So today we're going to talk about the 80 tonic people. The key part is the tonic part. And what tone means is the pupil constricts, but then stays tonically constricted. And that tonic constriction is the feature that differentiates the tonic pupil from other common causes of pupil dysfunction where the pupil doesn't react well to light. So in the 80 tonic pupil, what we're looking for is the increased tone on the near response. So what we have is a light reaction that is either poor or absent, but a preserved near reaction. And that finding is called light near dissociation. So when we see a light near dissociation of the pupils, we'd like to know, is it unilateral or bilateral? In the eddytonic pupil, it's usually unilateral initially and then becomes bilateral over time in some percentage of patients. But when it's unilateral, it makes it a lot less likely to be central because the central causes of light near dissociation are usually bilateral and not unilateral. And when you have a unilateral adytonic pupil or a bilateral, what we're looking for is a sector paresis. So one part of the iris might be paralyzed and the other parts can still move. And the other parts that still move have hippus, the normal change in reactivity of the pupil. And that can look like there's a worm, a vermiform, a worm-like movement in the pupil. And so when we see the combination of a sector paresis, a vermiform uh, movement, and a tonic reaction of the pupil at near with a poor light reaction or no light reaction, these are the key differentiating features of adistonic pupil. Now, what we can't have, because it's just involved in the pupil, is we can't have any ptosis and we can't have any other motility deficit because the adytonic pupil is a lesion in the ciliary ganglion, and therefore we can't have any other third nerve findings. So we have to make sure it's not a third nerve palsy, because the third nerve palsy can actually cause something that looks like a tonic pupil, resulting in light near dissociation. That's from aberrant regeneration. The differentiating feature, of course, is the sector paresis. So in a third nerve palsy, we would not expect a sector paresis, and we can't have any ptosis or motility. So first, make sure it's not a third. Look for the sector paresis. And once we have light near dissociation that is tonic, then we can say that this is probably an adystonic pupil clinically. And if you want to confirm this finding, we can put low-dose pilocarpine into the eye. So pilocarpine is a direct-acting parasympathomimetic. And so under normal conditions, a dilute amount of pilocarpine, one-tenth percent, in a normal pupil usually does nothing. But if you denervate the nerve or its ganglion, as in adystonic pupil, there'll be upregulation of the postsynaptic receptors, and that will lead to denervation supersensitivity. So the administration of one-tenth percent pilocarpine in an adystonic pupil will constrict the pupil. The problem, of course, is it doesn't tell you where the denervation is. So we should not use the pilocarpine low-dose test to make the diagnosis of adystonic pupil. That is a diagnosis made clinically based on the findings of light near dissociation, the tonic near reaction, the sector paresis, and the absence of third nerve palsy. We do not want to use this test alone to make the diagnosis because denervation from a third nerve also would produce supersensitivity because denervation of any source produces upregulation of the postsynaptic receptors. And some patients with the Addy's tonic pupil have the full Addy's Holmes sim syndrome, and that means they have concomitant areflexia. And the typical patient is a patient who is young and female and is otherwise healthy. So if we have the areflexia, we're going to be thinking about Addy's Holmes syndrome. And I told you most of the time that Addy's tonic pupil is reserved for the idiopathic variety. So if you have a cause, trauma, surgery, like optic nerve sheath fenestration, we would just call that the tonic pupil. Addy's tonic pupil is kind of like the idiopathic variety. And because most of the time it's unilateral, the bilateral cases probably should be evaluated for light near dissociation on a central basis. And the main mimickers are the Argyle-Robertson pupil or dorsal midbrain syndrome from compression and syphilis. So I order a syphilis serology, RPR and FTA or TPA or syphilis IgG on every bilateral tonic pupil. And I do an imaging study on patients who have bilateral simultaneous presentations of light near dissociation for no other reason. So I hope that this explains what the adystonic pupil is, but the main feature is the tonic near reaction.